Hello and welcome. Today I want to show you how you can install the Uber Radiant, which is a level editor for Star Trek Elite Force 2. I'm going to assume you have already downloaded it from the links in the description. And now we are going to install it together. There are a few problems when installing this, of which you should be aware, so the Radiant actually works. First of all, we need a copy of a clean game folder, which means a freshly installed Star Trek Elite Force 2 without any mods, no reshade, no co-op mod, no nothing. All right, a clean copy of the game. Unless you are going to create co-op maps, don't use any mods like the co-op mod or whatever, any other mods, any texture mods, any sound mods, anything because you could probably run into problems if you use contents from other uh, mods. It can happen that the other people will not see the same textures or no textures at all, or the sounds will not work, or the game will crash for them. So start with a clean game folder and then later try out with different mods, for example, the core mod. So, um, all right. I have now here a clean copy. I cleaned out all the files from the base folder that should not be in there. And it's now a clean installation. And the first problem that can, uh, that's a little bit tricky and that can happen to you is if you uh, have this folder and you want to install the Radiant inside it or to compile maps from it, you need to make sure it actually is named at the end EF2. Otherwise, you will get a error message on compile, which looks like this. All right, so I've now um, renamed the folder. It's clean. I'm gonna copy the directory and then I'm going to start the installation of the Uber Radiant. There we go. I'm going to click on Next. I'm going to click on Everyone. I'm going to try to yeah, paste my path in here. You would uh, probably like to go on Browse. I have, however, copied the folder path and pasted it in here. Clicking on next, clicking on next. There we go. So far, so good. Now, the Radiant is now in this folder of the game installation, of this copied game installation. What we now need to do is change some properties on the executable. First, we're going to click on the executable with the right click. Then we go on properties. Then we go on compatibility. Then we click on change settings for all users at the very bottom. Then we select program, run program as administrator. And then we click on high DPA, high DPI scaling settings or whatever it is named. And we disable the DPI scaling and have the application, namely the Radiant, control over it. There we go. Accept. OK. OK. Now we can start the Radiant for the very first time. And it tells us that it didn't find the game in the standard installation, installation folder and it wants the right folder. All right, here I'm going to put my folder structure in again. There we go. And here we can also change vital settings. I recommend to go on a four port view here in the layout. Then I recommend autosave every five minutes like it's already here, then I recommend three button mouse, then I recommend to enable update 
X epsilon on camera movement and then we go from the general tab to the display tab here I recommend to um, use anti-aliased lines in X epsilon then light radiuses light drawing update lights on slider drag then mouse chaser then painting sizing info paint selection centroid then you can also select show actual lights colors in x epsilon then you want for sure have texture scroll bar and texture and name filtering enabled and the rest should be okay here then we go on user interface there is let me see can change the font size here make it a little bit digger, uh, bigger um, and can have the console lines to six and that's okay and here can you can look up the uh, various keyboard settings which keys you have to press to do certain actions in radiant that's something that's uh, actually for a completely separate tutorial but because that's a little bit more complex <laughs> all right then we have the colors that we can change and the game path and before we click on ok we go on colors and select jared's sheen click on ok radiant should now close all right and we start it up again uh, now Windows is asking me if the problem is making any if the problem if the program is making any problems. I'm clicking on no, um, and so far so good. That's it with the radiant. Now we can move these here out of the way so we have more space for the actual map. Then we click on file, open, go on base. And here are three maps that came with the game development kit. I'm going to open one. I'm going to go for this one because it's the smallest. This console window you did see, um, you can open it with O, with the O key. And you can rescale it. And if you press T, you see all the textures that are in use in this level. The scroll bar I'm using had to be enabled in the options, like I said before. And this search bar here needed also to be enabled. And you can see some textures are in blue font and some are in gray. Those in blue font have special properties. They are not just images they are images with special commands like for example they can have animations they can be transparent they can have special surface properties and these are called um, shaders so every texture with a shader is shown differently in blue i think that color is supposed to be all right so um the next thing you would want to know is how to inspect objects you left click on an object but first you need to hold down the shift key and then you left click on the object and to see the properties of an object you press the n key and it brings you up what kind of an object it is and a list of what it can do and the current settings for this object Okay, I deselected it on escape. Um, you can move the camera by right clicking the mouse and holding the right click, uh, the right, right key, sorry. Um, all right, so the next thing you want to do is compile a map. I'm gonna click, I'm gonna press N again to close the entity uh, menu. You go on build map 
and then to compile a map quickly you click on quick compile bsp and this and it's working if it's not working for you you either forgot to set administrative privileges for the radiant because it needs it um, or you forgot to rename the folder to ef2 at the end all right so it now compiled the map so let's look into the base folder into the maps folder and there we go that's the map just compiled and that's it so far i hope you liked it